Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you've just joined us. My name is Danelle and before we get into today's story I just wanted to share two rather exciting bits of news to you all. The first being is that for those of you who have followed me for a little while will know that my partner and I finally managed to get married back in August after many date changes due to Covid and last week we got the official photos back from our wonderful photographer. I have made a short video of some of our personal favourites which if you're interested in seeing at all then they are in the link down below in the description box. I've said it before and I'll say it again, you guys are very much like my family and I love sharing little pieces of my personal life with you all. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoy watching and seeing just, yeah, it, it was a perfect day and we must see and wish for anything better. The second piece of news I have for you all this evening is that the Nell's Crypt channel now has merch, which means now that if you would like to help support the channel in a different way, then you very much can do. Again, I will leave the um, link in the description box below for you to go and check out. We have so many different pieces of merch down there. Uh, I am so excited and I absolutely adore the little picture that we have courtesy of my wonderful friend Andy who who's yeah just insanely talented when it comes to drawing. Um, if any of you are in the process of or thinking about um, maybe opening up your own merch store or are interested in getting like little logos or art pieces designed for anything else then he is currently working on his own website for commissions so as soon as that is up I will let you go stay so yeah keep your eyes peeled for that in the meantime however as always grab a drink dim the lights and let's get into today's story. In 1836 a wealthy gentleman by the name of Joseph Gardet commissioned a local New Orleans architect by the name of Frederick Roy to build a grand mansion style home at 716 Dauphine Street, New Orleans. And this place would first be known as the Gardette La Press House. Later it was um, the notorious title the Sultan's Palace. Now despite being the one to have commissioned this grand almost palatial type home, Joseph Gardette and his family would not end up living at this grand place for very long instead selling it in 1839 to a gentleman called Jean-Baptiste Le Pret. Jean-Baptiste was an incredibly wealthy bank merchant and plantation owner and in fact he had so much wealth that for part of the year he and his family would live in the centre of New Orleans in this grand house and for the rest of the year they would live in their plantation house just outside of town. How the other side lived, hey. Unfortunately for Jean-Baptiste that wealth would not last. Civil war struck during the 1860s leading to the Le Pret family as well as many others for the first time struggling for money. Jean-Baptiste soon found that he was no longer able to afford the upkeep of the grand home at 716 Dufan Street. So in the end he decided that in order to make a little more money to help things along he would lease the place out. 
it would appear that Lady Luck smiled down on him then because it wouldn't be too long before he would be approached by a gentleman of Middle Eastern origin. Now, some of the stories that I've read say that this gentleman claimed to be a sultan, others say that he claimed to be a sultan's brother or a right-hand man or someone closely connected to the sultan at any rate. Either way, he was incredibly interested in renting 716 Dufan Street from Jean-Baptiste and naturally needing the money and thinking, well, you know, a sultan is clearly wealthy enough to be able to afford a lease on a building this grand. Jean-Baptiste agreed and their papers were signed. Well, not long after the contracts had been written up and signed and everything agreed upon, a ship appeared in the port of New Orleans and disembarking would be a, a procession unlike anything the people of New Orleans had ever seen before. There were beautiful exotic looking women dressed in the very finest of silks and jewellery. There were stern faced guards wielding deadly looking weapons. There were servants carrying out all kinds of ornate, beautiful, clearly incredibly expensive pieces of furniture and behind them all the Sultan himself stepped out. This incredible looking procession slowly made their way through New Orleans until they reached the Gardet La Presse mansion. They disappeared inside, the doors closed and that was it. This was the talk of the town for many, many days afterwards. And what was interesting was that although the Sultan and his household didn't exactly arrive in New Orleans in a discreet fashion, there was clearly something that he was paranoid about because well, for one thing, neither he nor any member of his household were seen at all after. Huge heavy drapes were put up at the windows to prevent anyone from looking inside. Not only that, but bars were also put up at the windows as well. There were guards posted at every door and all along the balcony around the mansion and even when deliveries were made to the mansion no one ever came outside to actually collect them the delivery drivers would place them on the front steps drive away then the following day bars of gold would be left on the steps for the delivery drivers to collect. I mean, can you even imagine making a delivery to this place, coming back the next day and finding bars of actual gold waiting on the steps for you? That's just insane. <laughs> However, just because the people of New Orleans never saw anyone come or go from the guard at La Prette Mansion, didn't mean to say they weren't aware of the inhabitants. Every night the sounds of grand parties would float out from the walls of the Gardet Le Pret mansion. There'd be the scent of incense and opium, of oriental music, of laughter and not only that, but the sounds of carnal pleasure as well. So clearly the Sultan knew how to, to throw a hell of a party, much to the annoyance of the people of New Orleans who never once got an invitation to any of these events. This was carry on and become something of the norm 
for the people of New Orleans for the following few months. However, things were about to change. One night, a huge storm hit New Orleans and while most of the people there battened down the hatches and waited for it to pass, the residents of the Gullet La Press mansion partied on as usual. By the following morning, the storm had passed by, the sun was out and everything was calm and quiet and peaceful once more. A young man striding down the road, just going about his business, walked by the Garda Le Press house and first of all noticed it was incredibly quiet, almost too quiet. As he walked by the huge front doors, he noticed something on the steps. It was red and thick and dripped down. Upon closer inspection, he realised what it was. Blood. He ran to alert the police who arrived there in short order. They broke the door down and what they found inside was nothing short of a horror movie. The entire place was covered in blood. There were bits of bodies littering the floor, just body parts. Some of even the most hardened police officers had to step outside to throw up at simply the sight and the smell of it all. And once they had managed to regain some of their composure and make their way inside, the sheer amount of blood on the floor meant they had to hold onto the wall to stop themselves from stepping over. Every room that they went into, it was the same story. There were no whole bodies to be seen. It looked very much as if there had been no survivors of this attack. They realised then that they hadn't found the Sultan yet. Little did they know that they were about to be faced with yet another chilling sight. Stepping out into the courtyard outside, they discovered the ground still sodden and muddy from the rainfall the previous night. Beneath the tree, they noticed something sticking out of the ground upon closer inspection. To their horror, they found it to be a human hand reaching up as if to try to grasp the life itself. Well, of course, they went to dig it up as quickly as they could. They found it to be no other than the Sultan himself, a look of pure horror etched onto his face. He had been buried alive. The police were at a complete loss as to who could have done this horrendous crime. And in the end, it is widely believed that they put it down to pirate attacks. Or at least that's how the folklore of this particular story goes. Now, I say folklore because to this day, there's been no concrete evidence to suggest that this is a true story. For one thing, no one's been able to actually find anything in the form of historical records to even remotely suggest that there was a massacre like this at 716 Dufam Street. Not only that, but there are some bits of the story that I personally find quite hard to believe. For one thing, how loud must that storm had been to be able to cover up the sounds of an entire household of god knows how many people being hacked to death and nobody in the neighborhood heard anything whatsoever i mean don't get me wrong 
I really believe that it's possible to be able to sleep through huge noises. Um, I remember being told the story once of, I think it was my great grandfather or great great grandfather. Um, he slept right the way through uh, air raid one night during one of the world wars and woke up the next morning to an entire side of his house completely missing and he could literally look out onto the street but that was just one person to have an entire neighborhood completely sleep through something to that extent yeah i will hold up my hand and say yeah i'm not entirely convinced on that one however i do believe that every piece of folklore comes from somewhere like i think take for example um black eyed kids the stories around them have been going on for absolutely years on and off and if you think about it these stories started long before the invention of you know coloured contacts or anything like that so there must be something to these folklore stories right i mean they must have come from somewhere other than just somebody's imagination coming back to the switch at hand however i have three possible theories behind this story first one being is that it is entirely made up and it's simply a fun story to tell you know um tourists to new orleans on the many ghost tours and ghost walks that are found in the city. The second theory I have is that it could well be a true story and it could have been covered up by the police or they may well have been bribed by the Sultan or the Sultan's brother's family who didn't want to get out. I mean, if the Sultan or the Sultan's brother had performed any kind of grave transgression against the family, then of course they would want to have kept it all hush hush. The third theory I have is that given the number of disasters that New Orleans has suffered over the years, it's quite possible that any records that there had been of any such massacre of uh, entire royal household had simply been, you know, destroyed by, you know, fire or water or any of the other natural disasters that have plagued the city over the years. I don't know, those are just kind of my personal takes on the story. Regardless, it's absolutely one of my favourites and I would absolutely love to know what you guys think of it and hear any theories that you may have. Regardless of whether any such massacre happened at 716 Dufan Street, there's definitely the possibility that there is some form of paranormal happening in the building. Stories connected to the Sultan's Palace folklore suggest that occasionally you might hear the sound of screaming or of body parts hitting the floor or a small scent of opium and incense. Moving away from the folklore, however, there seem to be two kind of main spirits that have been cited more than once. One of which being a young woman who may well have lived there years ago and simply 
decided to, to stay. Another rather interesting spirit is that of a young man dressed in a confederate soldier uniform which is quite interesting considering the fact that there were no actual civil war battles that went on in the local New Orleans area so quite where he's come from we're not too sure maybe it was the young man who once lived there who went off to fight elsewhere who knows for sure really the current owner of the building claims that she doesn't believe in any of the folklore of the Sultan's Palace at all but she does admit that there have been a few odd goings on since she took over the place mostly things going missing such as keys so there's quite possibly some kind of playful spirit who likes just kind of reminding people that they're still there either way bloody massacre or not there definitely seems to be something about 716 Dufan Street which just doesn't seem quite right and to be honest if I were ever given the chance to investigate there I would absolutely jump at it. I really hope you enjoyed today's video if you did then be sure to leave a thumbs up and comment down below as always and if you haven't already then be sure to hit that subscribe button add the notification bell so you never miss an upload. In the meantime, however, as always, stay safe and sweet dreams.